Hey guys, Brixie Tech here, and today I'm doing a quick video going over my new motherboard for a project. It is the ASRock B450 Gaming ITX uh, slash AC. And um, before we get uh, looking at the motherboard, let's take a quick look at the box. So, um, pretty small box as far as you know the height and width, but it is pretty tall. Um, to fit a lot of the accessories in there. So anyways, here's kind of a look at the the top um, This one had a sticker on it saying it's 3000 uh, Series desktop ready, so it comes with a newer BIOS um, And then on the sides It's like we got the UPC label and just the name and this is like under the fatality brand um, I've had a fatality board before for an Intel back in the uh, Sandy Bridge 1155 uh, or it was fine. It was a little, a little much for as far as looks. But you know, back then I was a little younger and enjoyed it. This one doesn't have as much styling on it, so not bad. And then in the back, again, just the name. And then if we go to the side, um, same thing. And then we go to the back of the box. And then it looks like we got a little picture of the motherboard. Um, talking about the uh, RGB. Um, here's a slot of the back and then uh, just some QR codes to check out information probably like the BIOS and their Facebook page going over the LAN so this has an Intel LAN which is nice those always seem to be a little uh, better quality than the real tech uh, especially if you're using it for um, something like a router or something like PFSense but this only has one NIC so I probably wouldn't suggest that and then Creative Sound Blaster for the real, I think it just has real tech, um, or maybe creative sound, um, which would be a nice upgrade over real tech. And then it does have a dual USB 3.1 and USB C, which I feel like is a nice um, option on a B450. You don't see that always, especially on this is, was a cheaper board. I got this on sale on Amazon for 85 bucks, which at the time was a pretty good deal for a ITX motherboard. They seem to be going a little more. Um, it does have one M.2 slot. Wish it had two, but you know, for the money, I'm not going to complain. And then here are some of the specs. And then let's just take a real quick look what comes in the box. Um, so here's the bag for the motherboard, and then um, the M.2 screws. Nice, nice to have those. Or kind of be hard to track down sometimes. And if we lift this flap here, we're going to get uh, the IO shield. Kind of ugly, but, you know, it's nice to have it over nothing. And you, know, you don't see it a ton usually. And then it comes with one uh, SATA cable. Let's put that over there. And then we do have two uh, Wi-Fi antennas for the included Wi-Fi. And then looks like a quick software setup guide and um, the mother uh, board manual itself or quick installation guide and it does come with it looks like drivers but I mean let's be honest who puts a CD-ROM or DVD-ROM in something today especially being um, you know an ITX build and then it does come with a postcard so you can send someone postcard but hey kind of cool better than nothing I guess and then let's move this to the side. We'll look at the motherboard itself. Oops. All right, and here is the motherboard. So um, let's take a look at the back first. So again, here's a shot of the back. So you get your uh, two SU, two USB 2.0 ports. I think these one of these is advertises like for a fatal fatality mouse. It's kind of a marketing gimmick, but uh, if you do have one of those, it will work. And then uh, here's a PS2 port for your older uh, peripherals. And I think you can use a splitter if you have a mouse and a keyboard. And then we have display port. Um, and then HDMI. It would have been nice to have a DVI, but uh, you know, whatever. Uh, here's your USB. I think this is the USB-C and then 3.2 maybe. It might be 3.1. And then your 3.1 ports, um, there's going to be your Intel NIC, um, and then your 7.1 surround sound. And it's nice to have the optical out, especially if you have like a sound bar or a home theater system. 
and then over here we're going to have our um, dual channel Wi-Fi using and it has an Intel I think it's like a 5000 series chipset but this does come off there's a little screw on the back and you can actually replace the card with like Wi-Fi 6 if that's important to you or um, upgrading down the future and then all right let's look at the board itself so over here you're going to have your 8 pin CPU um, and then some it looks like some VRMs and then up top uh, you have your addressable RGB and then 12 volt RGB and this is for your AMD cooler like if you have one with the RGB built into it like that comes with like the X series um, CPUs and then you have a uh, looks like a CPU fan uh, your two DDR4 DIMM slots uh, 12 port or 24 port power supply and you got another fan uh, port right there and then going down here, here's going to be your PCI 16x slot. It would only run at 3.0, also maybe slower depending on the processor you use. And then here is the chipset for the B450. And then obviously here in the middle is for the CPU socket. I have my um, Athlon 3000G in there. And then kind of going over here, we have um, your front panel headers, uh, so four SATA ports, so nice if you need those. Uh, your USB 3.0, so only one of those, the internal header, and then your USB 2.0. And then it looks like you have your little CMOS over here, kind of an ugly little striped uh, cable there. I wish it was all black. And then here's going to be your um, 3.5 audio output uh, for like the front panel of the case. Kind of an ugly or a bad spot for that, but you know, being an ITX build, they can't really. Uh, fit everything conveniently so they kind of just have to make some sacrifices and then kind of hard to see but down here is your clear CMOS so if you overclock too much um, you can reset that and then we'll just go over to the back of the board real quick and then here is going to be your M.2 slot it does come with a screw so nice to have that but yeah overall seems like a pretty good board for the price um, I just wish it had an extra M.2 slot on the back or on the front, and then, you know, if that front panel audio could be moved, but from the case I'm using in, it doesn't even have front panel audio, so not a huge deal, but uh, I'm going to be doing a, another build video showing me using my 3000G just to build, like, kind of a, either, like, an emulator box or kind of, like, a Linux gaming PC for, like, old school games, so the uh, integrated graphics on that should be more than enough, and then down the road, when the 5000 series uh, CPU come out with like an APU, uh, I might upgrade to one of those as long as it's a lower uh, wattage build, or I guess a lower TDP. So yeah, looking forward to uh, building with this. And if you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Hope you guys have a good one. Thanks, bye.